Gotta drive safe on these back roads. Hello, Wonder Hussy here. Just driving around the middle of nowhere in my busted Toyota. Just kidding. Uh, my rig is in the shop because one of the bushings on one of the shocks needs replacing. And my mechanic told me no off-roading until I get it fixed. But thankfully, I got a friend who's got an off-road Toyota and he agreed to take me to some really cool places that he's found way, 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 way out in the middle of nowhere. And when I say the middle of nowhere, well, you know I've been to some remote places and this is remote even by my standards. Okay, so we just came up this really rough Jeep trail. And by the way, there was actually a bunch of Jeepers uh, down at the bottom of the road, but they were very kind. They recognized me from my channel and they said they would wait about 20 minutes before they come up here so I can make my little video. Yeah, we are in the middle of nowhere, but it's President's Day weekend, which is a big uh, off-roader holiday in the desert. So there's a ton of Jeepers and side-by-siders and all kinds of people like that out here. Uh, but these Jeepers were cool. They said, go on ahead and we'll wait. So let me go ahead and make this video before it gets overrun. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, we came up this real rough Jeep road. And while we're at this site, <laughs> the first thing we see is this old, I guess that's an old generator. Oh, look, the generator lid opens. You can see inside it. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. How old do you think this is? 30s. 30s? 30s? What? You think this is from the 1930s or 1940s? That well, old? The, the wheel and everything, but this motor might be. Oh, well. might be. Fairbanks Morse. I've seen that name on stuff before. But then the coolest thing in my estimation is look at this old VW bus that's parked here. Isn't that wild? Uh, now, I don't know a whole lot about cars or VW buses in particular, but that's got that split front windshield, which I feel like is, they only did that up till a certain year and it's kind of like a collector's item type thing, isn't it? Anyway, it's just sitting here, rusting away in the hot desert sun, right where it's been ever since who knows who left it here. I mean, you can see the license plate's even still on it. You can see the VW logo was peeled off a long time ago, but there's still a spot where it used to be. You can see it plain as day. Looks like the poor thing's been shot up a bit. Target practice. And then somebody wrote, turn back. <laughs> now I'm not gonna lie, if I was driving up here by myself, as I often do, and I saw that, mm, it might make me think twice about coming up this canyon. If I hadn't already thought twice about the road coming in, when I say it was a rough road, I'm not kidding, it was a rough road. Anyway, I don't want to take too long making this video because all those jeepers were so kind as to kind of cool their heels waiting for me at the bottom of the road. So let's get right into it. Here's the old VW. Look at that. <laughs> old steering wheel. Look at the dashboard. Oh my goodness. What was that like an eight? Is that an eight track player? Holy cow. Seats are completely gone. Just the springs left. A little gas pedal brake. This is cool. This reminds me of the old summer of love hippie days. Like kind of has a Manson family vibe to it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I can only imagine Charles Manson and a few of the girls piling into this rig over in LA at Spawn Ranch and driving out to the desert to do some exploring. And well, then they got <laughs> stuck here in this canyon and couldn't get the bus out. And well, who knows? Just, it's a likely theory. Uh, looks like the back end is pretty much missing. There's not really a whole lot left inside. Well, let me just make sure. Hold on. Wow, this would have been real cozy, though, if you did uh, have this turned into a little camper bus. You know, a little bed back here. Uh, uh, just a bunch of junk. And then look over here. This is kind of cool. You guys know what this is? Uh, I'll do a little 360 around it. And if you can tell me what this is, well, you're probably from... Southern California, or else you're just real smart. That right there is what they call a smudge pot, and they use them in the orange groves in Southern California, maybe in Florida too, I don't know, to keep the oranges from freezing when the temperature drops below a certain point. 
you fill that bottom chamber there. This bottom part here you fill up with oil and then you light it on fire and it's this little top piece is like a chimney and flames shoot out the top and it puts off an insane amount of heat. I know because I have uh, some friends that have one of these and they bring it camping. It's really cool. And that you can use any kind of oil or grease in it to, um, to, bur to light it. So they get like old hot dog grease. We have another friend that has a hot dog food truck. And so he saves all his old deep fry grease from the French fries and uh, they burn it in there and they take it camping. And even when it's like below freezing outside, that thing will keep you <coughs> toasty and matter of fact my friend that i'm operating with he is from southern california and he was telling me when he used to walk to school back in the day he would see these giant smudge pots in the orange groves and they, the ones they use in the orange groves are way bigger than this uh this i guess is just a well gosh i don't know why somebody would have brought it out here i guess just to stay warm because we're at a, at a decent elevation up here i guess it gets pretty cold up here in the winter time okay so that was the smudge pot and the vw bus uh anybody watching want to guess what year this bus is uh anyway there's also a i guess there's like a little shack or cabin or something hidden up there and then well my friend eric just pointed this way there's something he wants me to go see eric thinks we should go up here and see what's up here let's find out what he thinks we should see oh okay some pallets that's exciting oh a blue plastic crate that doesn't look that old oh what is this a mine at it Oh my goodness, somebody was working on something up here. What is this? Oh my gosh, yikes. Oh, there's a shovel down there, golly. <laughs> yikes, I gotta be careful climbing around on this. What do you think, it was just somebody working a mine? For what? Oh, that's an old original shovel. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah, it's got a wooden handle. Wow, yeah, no telling how long ago. And then, but look at this pulley, though. That looks kind of newer, doesn't it? An old swing set. Oh, this was a swing set. Yeah, but they used it for pulley to pull they, oh, sure did. Look at that. Well, I love uh, having a friend, a knowledgeable friend with me on these things to explain what's going on. Thank you, Eric. We appreciate your service. <laughs> okay, and then just above that little mine adit, I guess you would call it, it says it's a registered mining claim absolutely no prospecting allowed this includes panning sluicing dredging metal detecting or any other activities that result in the removal of minerals okay well it doesn't say anything about no youtubing <laughs> so i guess i'm okay i'm not planning on dredging sluicing or metal detecting i'm just here to poke around and try to figure out who lived here and what went on and well to that end you can see eric is walking up the trail towards this little cabin this must be where the guy lived who was working this lonely little claim before i go up there let me just do a quick pan of look at this beautiful little valley we're in can you imagine if this was your job you went down in that little mine and dug out whatever you could by day then you came out here at night and oh my god the sunset must be absolutely beautiful over the old burned out vw bus what a place all right, let's hike over and see what's in this cabin. Beautiful day to be hiking around in the desert too, by the way. Like I said, it's President's Day weekend. I think the temperature is in like the low 70s. Just great, not a cloud in the sky. Friendly folks everywhere. It's a great time to be alive in the Mojave Desert. Okay, let's see if there's anything left in this little cabin. I mean, it doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape considering, I mean, we are way, way out here. I guess not that many people come out up this road. We haven't seen too many tire tracks. All those jeepers notwithstanding. Hey, look at this little cactus out front. Isn't that a fake cactus? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh gosh, look. Don't litter. Don't drop cans or paper. Take garbage out with you, please. Wow, this cabin is actually super cool. Look, oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Before I go in. <laughs> well, yeah, the door's missing, but... This well, oh, the door was on it when you came here before? When when were you here? Five years ago. So he was here five years ago and there was a... So people have been out here. I mean, somebody took the door off. It could be wind, I guess. Anyway, this little campfire ring out here so you could camp at this little cabin. <laughs> One room, nothing fancy, but yeah, look at the roof, still pretty good too. Okay, let's see. The floor is looking kind of dicey, but I'm I'm going in. 
So make sure. Yep, we're good. Okay, oh my goodness. Look in this freaking cabin, you guys. This is wild. <gasps> Holy cannoli. My goodness. Okay, so there's all these really kind of cool, kind of creepy old Wild West. Well, <laughs> and then this. <laughs> Pictures stuck on the wall. So there's Butch Cassidy. Wanted, dead or alive, $4,000 reward. Oh, excuse me, Robert Leroy Parker, a.k.a. Butch Cassidy. Then we got some bad-looking hombres over here. We got Black Bart, Wild Bill Hickok, and Calamity Jane. And then these two don't have names. I recognize the guy on the right. I don't know. Is that Wild Bill Hickok? And then I'm not sure who that Native American chief is. Wow, I recognize a lot of these people from uh, the TV show Deadwood. If you ever watched Deadwood on HBO. Or Al Swearingen, the foul-mouthed bartender or saloon keeper. <laughs> anyway, then over on this wall, it looks like there were some more... Oh, well, I was going to say... Oh, these are paintings, actually. Yeah, I know it's real blistered by the sun, but you might be able to make out... Uh, it's a guy riding a horse. Like, it looks like an Apache, maybe, riding a horse into a canyon. And then here's a really cool stippled drawing of a cowboy. You know, stippling is when they do that, just like a bunch of little dots, little bunches of tiny pencil dots. That's called stippling. Remember, I was an art major. And I don't know who it's supposed to represent, but then over here we got a Native American, looks like a Native American couple, maybe husband and wife, maybe brother and sister. Also hand-drawn, that's cool. And then look, here's a one more wanted poster for Ed Nazelrod. Alias Mousy or Mike, Wild Red, something Blackie, Tulsa Tom, Bogus Joe, and a few others. That seems like it might just be like a joke novelty poster. I've never heard of Mouse Ear, Mike, Tulsa Tom, or Bogus Joe. Anyway, that's all the posters on the walls. Uh, it's a small cabin. There's, it looks like a kind of queen size mattress, unspeakably filthy in the corner. It would have been cozy back in the day. Uh, there's a bunch of junk all over the bed, all over the floor, all over the place. Let's just see if there's anything interesting. An old ceiling fan. I don't think that was ever hung up in here because I don't think this place was ever wired for electricity. Uh, paint rollers. Oh, some kind of swiveling tabletop, it looks like, from an RV. Eh, some old blankets. Oh, this, oh, this is an old coat. This here. It's a like a raincoat and it's Faded Glory, which I think is, isn't that a Walmart brand? That can't be that old. Old blankets, those Mexican blankets, another mattress, <laughs> an old cup from Harrah's Casino in Vegas. We're not that far from Vegas, I guess. And then some kitchen stuff, a, a mixer, an electric mixer out here. Oh, I don't know what you call that thing. Use it to mash up potatoes and stuff. I mean, I guess there was a little kitchen here back in the day, but it's just rat poo now. Oh my god, look at this fork. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess there was a full kitchen here. Oh, look, there's like newer carpet rolled up here. Interesting. Oh, bunch of old carpet stuck. It's too heavy to move. I'm sitting on top of this. Well, bin's empty anyways. Okay, well, there's one other kind of interesting thing in this cabin next to the door. The Invitation. It's a poem, I guess, by a guy named Oriah, Mountain Indian Elder. It says, it doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you'll risk looking like a fool for love, for your dreams, for the adventure of being alive. Well, I'm not going to sit here and read this whole poem to you, but it's cool. He just says it doesn't interest, this doesn't interest me, that doesn't interest me. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments. Now, how many of us can say that? I like the company I keep in my empty moments. I'm always going on about how I want to be alone. I love being alone, man. So I feel like if I knew this Oriya Mountain Indian elder, well, maybe I would have passed his test. This is a cool poem. I'm going to take a picture of it and you can pause the video and read the whole thing if you want. Okay, well, that's about it. There's just some old metal storage shelves and an old folding table. 
bric-a-brac junk strewn about behind the cabin. Might as well walk around 360 just to make sure we don't miss anything. Wow. What a spot though. I mean, the walls of this thing are still in pretty good shape. Far out. Well, this was definitely worth coming up that long, bumpy road. Yes, thank you, Eric. I appreciate you taking, we all appreciate you taking us to this cool place. Uh, guess what though? <laughs> He's got more in store. That's right. This is our first stop today. We're, we kind of set out for the whole day off-roading. He came and picked me up at my Death Valley compound and we headed out in his Toyota. This was stop number one. We still have a few other places to check out in the wilds of the mysterious Mojave Desert. So stay tuned for that. Okay, wait, surprise ending. Uh, we left the site and we're driving down towards our next place. And well, there's one more thing that's kind of interesting uh, at this lonely abandoned prospector's mining claim. I mean, here you can see an example of how steep and rough this road is. We came from up there and we're driving along down and we spotted this old Ford Fairlane, oh my gosh, look at that. Motor still in it, can you imagine? It's kind of on a steep slope and well, I already changed into my flip flop so I don't feel like scrambling down there to look at it up close, but I'll give you a little peek, kind of neat. Don't know how that ended up out here, what happened? Was it done on purpose or did they just fall off the road? Gotta drive safe on these back roads. <laughs>